Hello everyone and welcome to Dust Tell. My name is David Wells and I'm Head of Communication for Fairytale Distillery. Today I'm going to be walking around in our prototype and showing you guys a bit of what we've got going on and I'm also going to be discussing some systems and features that you can expect to see in future builds. Now to start with the basics that you can see here, Dustal uses WASD movement and I'm moving my cursor with my mouse. But as you can see I can move my cursor out towards the edge of the screen and rather than it just hitting the edge of the screen there it's actually extending my vision. So the camera's actually centered in between my cursor and my character and I can use this to scout around a bit and take a look around at the map. Alex our game designer took some inspiration from Bloodline Champions for this particular mechanic and we thought it would add some interesting elements to PvP and scouting and I think it pulls it off really well, it's quite interesting. You'll also be able to see at the edge of my screen our fog of war and rather than using just a black or grey fog as you might see in a lot of other games, we decided to go for something that looked a lot more natural and it's actually imitating a sandstorm or sand being stirred up by the wind and I think it looks really good, our artist Mikhail did an awesome job with this. In case you haven't read anything on the Steam page already, Dust Cell is a sandbox MMORPG. Now a sandbox basically means that we let the players decide what they want to do in the world that we create. There's not going to be any quests leading anyone around from A to B or NPCs guiding anyone. It's basically up to the player what they do. MMORPG just means that the player will be walking around in a persistent world and all players who are on the same server will be interacting with each other in the same environment. And a persistent world also means that when players log out, the world's still going to be there taking place when they're gone. It's not going to shut off once they leave. And when they log back in, they may find that things have happened that will affect the world that they experience. Timeboxing is the term that we use to describe a feature that our servers have in that they will restart every few months or so, wiping everyone's characters, wiping all progress, and starting a new fresh world of Dust Tell. The reason I want to talk about this feature a little bit earlier in the video is because I think it's one that people see and it freaks them out a little bit or they dislike it. They imagine uh, themselves playing another MMO and the world ending and losing all their progress on their character that they've spent hours on. The important distinction to make here is that Dust Tell is going to be quite different to traditional MMOs gameplay wise. The reason I point that out is that the gameplay that people are going to be experiencing on the way to the end of the game isn't going to be the same as other MMOs. People aren't going to be grinding, they're not going to be spending hours killing insignificant mobs just so that they can get the next level up. It's not going to be all about a race to the end game. So with this feature we're actually offering people the opportunity to play through many unique instances of the world of Dust Hell. And at the same time we're also partially tackling the issue of stale end game that currently plagues a lot of traditional MMOs. Alright, here we have something that I want to show you and discuss with you at the same time, and this is a resource area. Traditional MMOs tend to have a resource gathering system where the player will walk around looking for small nodes and then gather a small amount from each one of these nodes. We want to do something different in Dastal, and each of these areas will spawn in at the commencement of the server and remain there until the end. And players will find these areas and hold the area in order to get a small trickle of resources going into their inventory. Resources are obviously going to be quite important as they're required for the players crafting and building. So holding the area basically just means defending it from other players who come along and want to gain the resources for themselves. So this is actually going to be quite a large PvP event, or at least more of a daily basis PvP event. Everyone's going to want to need to get resources, and they're all going to be coming to these locations. Once players have these resources, they obviously take them away from the area and use them to craft and build. Crafting gear is going to be quite important in Dust Tal as it actually determines what skills players are able to use. In order to use the skills they have learned, players will need to ensure that they have the correct gear equipped. While players can learn any skill and equip any gear item they like, some thought will need to go into matching these up, as skills will only match up to their correct weapon or armor item. As players level their skills, they will gain access to more skills in that particular weapon or armor type. This will open up more interesting and diverse gameplay in the later game.
So as I mentioned, we're trying to steer clear of the grinding aspect of traditional MMOs, and we try to replace that with a lot of player interaction and particularly PvP. Obviously a game with a heavy focus on PvP is going to need a pretty good PvP combat system, and that's what we've tried to create in Vestel. It's going to be completely skill based, uh, all skills will be aimed and timed, and there'll be no tab targeting or click to target abilities. The goal of such a system is pretty simple, we want combat to be fast paced, enjoyable, and we also want it to be fair. We don't want a character who's extremely geared to be able to one shot a character just because of their gear. We want it to be skill based. We want a character who may not have amazing gear to still be able to stand up against someone if they make good plays. And that in a bit of a strange way actually leads us on to full loot and open PvP. The full loot system is another thing that I think a lot of people see and they imagine new players just getting griefed for hours on end and they want to steer very clear of that. But in Vestel we're actually designing it in a way where we want it to be quite newbie friendly. And the way that we do that is by implementing the system in such a way that it's less harsh on lower level characters. So characters with lower level gear will actually be able to keep more of their gear upon death, whereas characters wearing high level gear will drop all of their gear upon death. So a high level character going in looking to gank newbies actually has more to lose in that their gear is all going to drop on the ground whereas new characters won't really drop most of the, their gear most likely. So in a lot of ways the high level characters have a lot more to lose going into these situations because if there's a couple of newbies there and they decide they're not really willing to give up their gear they might turn on the high level character and completely outplay them in which case the high level character will lose all of their quality gear whereas the low levels don't really have much to lose. So anyone who's getting a bit scared about the full loot when they see it have a bit more of a think about it because if you're going into the game as a low level character, you might get ganked a few times, but if you make a good play of it and end up outplaying a high level character, you might make some nice upgrades. Another thing that I think is important to point out is that the service time boxing feature will affect open PvP. A lot of people have a negative experience with open PvP because they spawn into a low level character and then spend all their time encountering characters that have been leveling up for a year or more. I already mentioned how the combat system will be helping out with this and how players will be able to stand up to higher level characters, but the service timeboxing feature will actually help out a lot here as well. Even if a player is to join a server for the first time when it's already been running for a few months and they come across characters at a very high level, the server is then going to reset at some point and all characters will be on an even playing field. So overall, while low level characters encountering high level characters will take place in Dastal, these systems ensure that the circumstances will be overwhelmingly fair and that the majority of the time it will be skill alone that decides the winner of any encounters. While we want to stay away from grinding with Dustal, players will still need to earn XP in order to progress their characters. There's actually three ways in which they can do this. The first is partaking in PvP activity, so that's resource warfare or sieges or general skirmishes throughout the map. The second is through picking up items from NPCs that are killed and then using these items. When the items are used, they'll give the character a certain amount of XP. The third way players gain XP is the free addition of XP given to every character each day. Characters will, however, only be able to gain a certain amount of XP through each of these methods, as each will have a daily cap. There's a few reasons behind these XP caps, but the main is that the focus of Dust Tower isn't leveling up. The focus should be on the gameplay and enjoying it. But this is also definitely aimed at making the game accessible to both casual and hardcore gamers. In this way, people who are able to play the game for longer hours can enjoy the game without getting a significant advantage over those who don't have as much time. So to explain a little bit about how this will actually work, imagine that we have two players who play together, and one of them can get in game for about three hours each day, and the other can only get in for about half an hour. The player who plays for about three hours each day will easily be able to get their XP in all three of these areas. The player who's only in for about half an hour each day though, they probably don't want to spend their entire half hour of gameplay worrying about making sure they get their XP cap. So straight away they've got that one third of their XP coming in from the free edition that every player gets each day. 
the second chunk of XP is gained through the items dropped by the NPCs. Now these items will be tradable, which means that the player who's been doing a bit of farming has probably picked up way more than they need. Will be able to trade a few of these items to their friend, which the friend will be able to use to get their XP cap for the NPC items that day. That just leaves the third XP gain, which is through PvP activity. Which means that these two players can then go out, get amongst the PvP of the world, and the player who's only there for a half hour will be able to earn their PvP XP, meaning they've got their full quota, all three methods of PvP gain, they've got that sorted for the day. The fact that players can keep these items that drop from the NPCs also means that if they have a bit of extra time on the weekend or something like that, they can store a few more of these items and then use them on the days when they don't have much time. So if they only have that half hour, they can log in. Uh, use a few of the items that they've stored from the weekend where they had a bit more time to play and then they've got their quota sorted for the item based XP. So this is a really good example of what we mean when we're talking about limited grind in Dust Tower. All players when they log in they'll all be receiving that one third of the XP gain. The second amount we leave quite open to trading and the players can store it and use it later so they can keep that quota up. And then the third segment they're going to all be getting when they're out doing the fun parts of gameplay, PvPing and doing that sort of stuff. These bushes that you can see in various areas of the map are also there for more than just aesthetics. They can be used to hide your player from other characters who might be looking to attack you and they won't be able to see you once you enter these bushes. So if you're a player of League of Legends, you're probably very familiar with this mechanic and we thought it'd be pretty cool to have something like this as it adds something pretty cool to combat. You can probably see my footsteps coming up behind my character as I walk along and that's something that people will be able to use to their advantage and they'll be able to actually track other players and for instance if a player goes into the bushes like I mentioned earlier and is unable to be seen then players might be able to see the footsteps leading into the bushes so they know that that character is hiding in there from them. So I think that's pretty cool people being able to track each other and follow their movements using their footsteps. Here we have the other main use for resources, which is player settlements. Player settlements will be built on ruins which will be scattered around the map similar to the resources. They will spawn in randomly at the start of each server. When players find one of these ruins, they'll need to gather the necessary resources and bring them to the site in order to restore it. Once restored, the settlement will offer a number of facilities, including a respawn site, training and crafting facilities. Player settlements will be the stage of the largest PvP events in Dust Tower, as players will be able to get together and siege their enemy settlements and take them over. This system will involve the attackers setting up siege tents around the settlement and then preparing their siege. When the siege takes place, the defenders and attackers will fight over 5 points and the team with the highest point count will be the owner of the settlement at the end. The siege system along with the resource gathering will form the large scale PvP in Dust Tower as groups of players battle against each other to vie for map control and domination. I think that about does it for this video guys. I'm going to leave a lot of links in the description. The one to check out in particular is our forums. We're really interested in getting feedback from people on these systems that I've been discussing. We really want people to get involved in what we actually do in the creation of Dust Tower. I really hope you guys have enjoyed some of the stuff I've been discussing and I hope you like the look of what we have so far in this prototype. I'm looking forward to making you some more videos on this sort of stuff, so I'll see you then guys. And as always, thanks so much for your support and interest in what we're doing.